What's up? Got a new knife here. It's in a box. Let's get it out of there. We'll check it in. Check it out. See what it's made of. See what's going on. And uh, I actually have a plan for this knife. I bought it with a certain intention. And I'm going to reveal it real quickly here. Let's get it out of this box. And then I can talk real quick about what I did and why I did it. So yeah, look at that. So this is a Ethan Grow EF905 in 14C28N. It's all titanium, got a titanium backspacer, titanium pocket clip that looks like it's gonna work. Big, hefty with, yeah, yeah, look at the size of that blade, man. EF 905-14C28N. So, let me wipe the oil off of it, and then I'm going to tell you why I bought this knife. Let's get this initial little oily thing off of here. Um, yeah, I said it before, I'll say it again. I don't mind the oil. I don't mind it one bit. It's helping to preserve that knife. Who knows how long it'll be in a box or on a boat or in the ocean or whatever. So, yeah, a little wipe down doesn't bother me a bit. Um, yeah, so I bought, oh, look at that. Man, that's a monster of a blade. And it's got a little bitty rock right there. Not much, but just a tiny bit. Uh, that, I don't even know what size that is. I'm going to have to look into that to get this apart. But So let me tell you why I bought this knife. So I bought this knife to compare to this knife. And to compare it to this knife. So I like this knife. Really well overbuilt. Tucson TS346. It's in D2 steel. Um, sort of the money. Like this one's right around $100. Um, so I like this knife. Very overbuilt. Um, love this knife. My ZT0308 in CPM 20 CV. And, I, I mean, the action, everything about this knife. It's a huge knife, but I really, really like it. I'm not really a big knife guy, but I like it. So, I thought, I saw this knife and I thought, man, I'm going to get this knife. And then I'm going to compare these three. And the reason I'm going to is because they're fairly close in price here way more expensive here, a little difference in materials, um, some of them, not other materials. So I thought, man, be a great opportunity for me to do these. But the mission today is I'm going to take this one apart. I'm going to check it in. We'll get a good look at it and then look for the video. I'm going to compare these three big knives and see what's up. Uh, you know, I'll probably have a criteria, you know, the things that I'm going to look at, like materials, uh, action, um, you know, sharpness, uh, ergonomics, how it feels in the hand. And then, of course, I'll do price. And so I, I'll probably come up with a few things that I'll look at the exact differences between these three or at least as close as I can get and we'll see what's up. But for now, let's get rid of these and this stuff and get to this knife. I already know I'm going to have to get some screwdrivers out here because this is not your typical bit. Man, is that action. Like, I'm pretty sure if I did that vertical... That blade will come down on me. And if it's sharp, it's going to cut me. That thing is super. Well, you know what? 
I have to find the screw because this is pretty loose here. So let me get my bit set. Um, and figure out which bit that is. There we go. I'm going to use these right here because they fit this driver. So here we've got a T10. Let's see if that fits it. And that is a solid no. So I'm not even sure that that's a torque bit. I mean, that's kind of in there. But it almost looks like it's threaded. Well, it is. It's threaded up high. Not down low. But that low is kind of deceiving. It makes me think that that's a thread. But it's not. It's, a, it's only up high there. So this one's a maybe. Let's try this one. That is a definite no. So... Um... I'm going to say that will work on that, but I think that's actually an Allen. That is not a Torx bit. That's an Allen. This is a Torx bit, and that looks like a T8. Yeah, that's a T8 there, but this is an Allen bit. So I'm going to pause the video and get an Allen bit and make sure that we get that right. Okay, so... I don't keep too many tools uh, where I do videos up here in my my video area. So I I have a shop that I have a lot of tools in. But I didn't want to walk down there this evening. So I got this bag out of my truck. I keep this in my truck. And the reason I'm doing this, because I'm going to link this. This was an uh, Amazon purchase. And I love this bag. But uh, it's called Ecorn. I don't know who that is. I think they're an American company. But... Uh, it has all these nice fit and finish parts, uh, connectors, super thick canvas, and it's got uh, the the YKK zippers on it. So really nice zippers. You you can open it at the bottom if you hang the bag. It it's got two zippers for each compartment, so you can do it. But I know in this bag, I think up here. I've got some Allen wrenches, and I think I've got a little metric one um, that I'm going to guess we're probably about here. So, uh, I didn't have what I needed in here. Yeah, that's it right there. So, anyway, so, I don't know. I can recommend the bag for sure. Super tough. I just keep it in my truck, keep some tools with me, and uh, came in handy this evening doing this video. Uh, who'd, have, who'd have thunk it? All right, all right. Well, let's get this thing apart, man. This video is gonna—it's gonna take an hour. Come back in an hour, and I'll be done. Uh, you know what? I know, man. I'm golly. I want to see. I want to get that slop out of it real quick before I take it apart and see if I can correct that play. Yeah, so no no play there. So very small adjustment. No no rock, no play. We're super tight there, and I don't think it's impacted that action no, at all. So it just needed to be tuned a little bit. I might have to Loctite that. It doesn't seem really uh, really tight. But, man, this action, whew. Um, I do kind of feel like it's going to need a little work. Um, and where it's going to need it is when I'm breaking that detent to release it. Right there, it hits that detent ball, and then it has it's jumping over a lip or something on there. So when I get it apart, I'll look at that. But yeah, so right there, it it's jumping over the edge of the knife, and it's kind of it's kind of stiff there. Anyways, yeah, so I'm I'm happy with the play. So let's get it apart, see what's in there. We'll get it cleaned up. And get it checked in. And uh, kind of go over it a little bit. Wow, look at the size of this pivot pin. The screw itself, even. I guess that's why it was an Allen head. Massive. I mean, overbuilt for sure. But it's hollow. Look at that. 
a hollow screw, I'm like an overbuilt screw, but it's completely hollow. I didn't even notice that, but yeah, I don't know if you can see through that, but yeah, there you go. You can see right through that thing. What's that about? That's kind of odd. All right, enough dwelling on that. Let's get the rest of this thing apart. Mm. Yeah, that don't need to come off. Tight. Let's get our little screw buster. So, yeah, I just, you know, I did the I did the video with the anodized one and the non-anodized that I picked up a little while ago, and uh, there seems to be some interest in it. So, uh, yesterday, um, I think somebody posed the question. Okay, so pivot screw, two screws, and she's apart. Yeah, it doesn't look too awful dirty. I mean, that's kind of one of the first things I look for is, is are, you know, is it dirty? Did they clean it reasonably before it left? This is really on there. Um, not sure if those come out from the other side, if they're screwed in there. Let's take a look. Mm. Well, they're not coming out with that screwdriver. Maybe I'll take this blade off before I cut myself. How about that? I mean, those bearings are massive. Got a dark spot here where it was ground on for sure. This got heated right in this spot. Yeah. Um, cage steel bearings. Super-sized uh, stop pin there. I'm going to try one of these and see if that what it takes to get that backspacer off. It does. They're, they're actually threaded to, I'm guessing, that spacer. The, the little spacer that holds them in there. Yeah, this thing. It's threaded on both sides. And we're this deep, so let's just finish, right? Be easy to try to cut this video short and not do that, but... I'm in, I'm in for a penny. Might as well be in for a pound and just get it done. There's that. Yeah. Super light, nice, anodized backspacer. Pretty cool. Um, yeah, I might as well get this. I'll be curious to see if it's inset. I think it is now that I've got it loose. Yeah, nice and set into the titanium so I mean I w I'm not overly concerned or concerned at all um, that's a different screw so I'm going to set that aside that is not the same as these other screws um, yeah there's no concern that sits in there it's going to hold it nice and tight pretty cool pocket clip super uh, flexible yeah nice all right well, let's get it cleaned up and we'll put it back together tune it, check the sharpness, kind of go through it a little bit. Yeah, I mean, it doesn't look dirty there. Let's wipe it and see. Not really. Um, I think there's a washer there. Yeah, there is. Kind of tried to hide it in there against that titanium. It's not a polished washer. That's kind of interesting. Um... I guess it doesn't need to be if the bearings are stout. And those are stout, man. These bearings are massive. Big, huge bearings. Some of the some of the biggest I've seen. Yeah, those bearings are huge. Something tells me that the action on this is going to improve. Cleaning it up and oiling it properly. I think I can make it better. We'll see. I mean, and there should be another washer in here, and there is. Let's get that out of there. Get it cleaned up. Yeah, that detent ball, when it's going over the blade, it's, uh, it's jumping pretty hard to get over it. And uh, you can feel that. I... Without a doubt, I'm not going to do anything to it right now. This is pretty flexible. That doesn't seem to be set too tight or anything. 
I think I'm just going to let it work and see what happens. I'll leave that be. And so it jumps over a little bit. To be honest, it's just because I feel it, which isn't the end of the world. Um, detent's not ramped. You know, it might be an improvement I can make to it later. Just take my little file and, you know, put a little ramp on that. But, again, that's not something I'm going to do in the checkout. It'd be something to do when I've got it in my hands and I'm messing with it later. I think I got everything. No, I got that washer. Maybe run these pins real quick. Ain't no sense putting that dirty oil back in there. Yeah, so, hey, another video I got coming up. Um, I talked about this uh, a few videos back, but I showed my wife a knife, and I said, hey, look at this knife here. Don't you think this one's sexy? And she kind of looked at me, you know, odd, like, what are you talking about? She goes, no, you you have some knives that I, I would say are attractive that maybe fall in that category, but that's not one of them. And I, I was kind of intrigued by that, that she kind of got the concept, but it just wasn't that knife. And so I told her, I said, hey, I'm going to make a video and we're going to have you pick out some knives that you think are sexy. So we kind of did a little bit of that this evening, kind of didn't film it, but ran through it. And uh, I'm kind of, it's kind of interesting, the knives that she likes. And pretty specific about it. Like, there's no... She's not hesitant at all. She knows exactly what she likes. And... And... Uh, certain shapes and colors and... Yeah. So, I'm looking forward to doing that video. This... Seems to be giving me resistance. take my time get it right yeah so that's in there nice okay um it does not have a captured pivot pin interesting i didn't notice that when i took it apart well i'm going to start with this side i guess it doesn't have to have one be nice if it had one be kind of a bonus but that's okay. Mm, you know, before I get going on that, I'm going to back up one step and I'm going to put this backspacer back on since that's threaded. Might as well get that done and secure. That way I don't have to have three sets of hands to try to put this together. I can capture all this right now. A couple of screws. So this thing's, this thing's a tank. You know, the I think the question becomes on a big knife like this is, yeah, I mean, you can make it big, but did you engineer it big? I, I don't know if that makes sense what I'm saying, so I'll try to explain it. I mean, honestly, probably everybody watching the video already knows exactly what I'm talking about here, but um, I tend to explain the stupid and, you know, get eyes rolled at me. I don't know, it's happened to me. How about that? But anyway, so what I mean by that is, I mean, you can just use big material, but if it's not engineered to be big and you just upsized all the materials, it doesn't mean it's any, it's any necessarily durable or tough. It's just big. So, uh, you know, it's kind of one of the things probably worth looking for. Um in these big knives like this is was it was it engineered to be big or did they just use some bigger materials um i'm not exactly sure the measurement for that but you know maybe it's fit and finish lock up you know that kind of thing I don't know. So it may be way more obvious than that. For instance, this stock pin, I mean, it's big, it's huge. Um, 
So this whole, did they engineer it to be big? I don't know. Maybe that's just nonsense conversation on my part because clearly this is big. I mean, the bearings are bigger and they've been engineered to be that big. So what am I even talking about? I guess I'm filling dead space while I'm trying to put it together. How about that? Maybe I surrender and go, yeah, it's just going to take me a minute to put this big old dude back together. But I do have the the means and the parts and the pieces. So I think one of the things when I'm doing videos, I just try to avoid dead time, which, you know, sometimes I guess it's maybe it's not such a bad thing. A little dead time versus listening to uh, nonsense, ramblings of a fool. Yeah, last screw. And then uh, we'll cinch up some stuff and make sure we're tight. Lock that blade out. Yeah, we're definitely tight now. I don't think we want to be as tight as that, but we'll get to it. Make final adjustments on these screws here. And then get to that pivot. Let's see what's up. I mean, it doesn't take much to just get that wrenched in there super tight. So, I'm, without a doubt, I'm going to have to put Loctite on that. Because now I've got that blade. Unless I've, I, I've mismanaged something there. But that don't, that don't want to work at all. Let me, uh, I'm going to pause and figure this out. Okay, so I got it back apart, and I left that washer off. And so it wasn't sitting centered, and those bearings couldn't spin. So it wouldn't surprise me if somebody saw it sitting right there. Uh, but it also doesn't surprise me that I didn't see it. Yeah, get going and didn't see it. But I will tell you this, I know enough not to like over torque stuff and, you know, try to force it. Um, I learned that working on motorcycles, you know, sometimes things don't fit quite right. And what you don't do is bully it and try to make it fit. Slow yourself down and, and uh, sometimes you got to backtrack. You know what? Let's, let me just take that back off there and see what's going on. And, uh, you know, it's not uncommon to forget something and it's a whole lot easier to find it before you torque everything down and bend stuff and break stuff and doesn't work right. All right. I mean, I'm a hundred percent confident it's going to run now because it was just off centered. I could see it right here. Uh, this side was way closer. All right, a little bit of pressure on there. Yeah, smooth as, smooth as could be. Let's check for a play. Yeah, so even that bump up is better now. So let's run it. I'm going to have to put some Loctite on it, but who man, is this thing smooth. Wow. All right, I'm going to put some Loctite on it. Might as well put it in the video because I don't want to take it apart again. There's no need for all that. If I had a bit, we could save some time because I could put it in my bit driver. But um, I don't. And the Loctite I normally use is this stick. But because of the way that is, I'm not going to use that. I'm going to use my other Loctite. Um, which is this it's Permatex and it's a gel. So it's kind of interesting. Squeeze the tube or I'm sorry, you twist the, the, uh, screw and you can see it coming up already. Yep. There it goes. I mean, the only downside of this is you really got to kind of manage the flow. Cause man, once you got it coming up, it's hard to get it to go down. So that's, that'd be a con of, of this uh, blue Loctite. But like there now, the way that it is, I'm going to be able to put it 
back on these threads a little bit versus down at the end because that end sticks out. So, yeah, I think I'm going to like this a little better than the other. Now, that's quite a bit of Loctite on there. I don't know. I think I'm okay. I mean, in the end, that Loctite, it just, it works with pressure. You know, it'll stay in a liquid form like that. I say liquid, but in a gel form like that until it's pressured and squeezed in that metal. Let's check for play. Make sure that that's where I want that tight to be. And then I'll check it once more before I put it up because clearly that hasn't had a chance to set up and now I'm throwing the action around. And, it, I, you know, it could back out just a tiny little bit. So I'll check it one more time. But I'm going to back this screw off a little bit um, and put this cap on. But here you can see how it, it it's kind of jumping out of there now. So... That's the downside of this particular gel uh, Loctite thread locker. Um, but other than that, I like it. And uh, I'll put a link to this too, because I'm pretty sure that this came from Amazon. So, all right. Let's see. How about we clear out some of this stuff, and then we'll take some final looks at this knife. Get rid of all of our distractions here. Okay. So, EF905, uh, 14C28N, titanium alloy, alloy uh, scales, uh, titanium pocket clip, titanium backspacer, and this action is, I mean, it couldn't be any more drop shut. It's just... Super, super drop shut. I mean, that thing will drop shut not even at a 90. Like, if I just tilt it up a little bit, it's going to go. Yeah. I mean, so the actions, I mean, it's just to die for. You couldn't beat it in a big knife like that. Uh, jimping, pretty aggressive, and it's grippy. Um, same, this jimping back here is grabbing my finger. So, from... from Having to put work in with this knife, I wouldn't have any concerns about this knife and my hand being protected from that blade. Um, 100% this could be used in that capacity. It's a little heavy. I'm not sure what it weighs, but I'm going to say that it's pressing up towards whew, 9 or 10 ounces probably. Yeah, it's it's on its way up there for sure. Thumb studs usable. I think you got to have maybe a bigger hand to utilize that function because that's a big reach. That's a lot going on there. Hmm. Um, let's check my, my typical safety features. Can I get that tip? Absolutely not. Yeah, that's guarded by that end piece. You can see it down in there. How about touch it in the back? Um, yeah, I can touch it right there. And just right there, right at that very tip, the, the thing, I don't think it's caused. Because, I mean, I'm digging to get in there, and it's right behind this flipper tap. But, yeah, I can touch that, that edge of that blade right there. Huh. Um, I'm not going to fail it for that. I can't touch it really anywhere along here. None of that's happening. It's just one little tiny spot, and I'm not even sure. I mean, I'm up on the blade there, so I don't know. I'd probably have to call that a fail, because you can get it. Uh, if you were reaching in the pocket, it'd be this way. And so if you were to reach down in your pocket and your finger, I mean, you got to go over this hump and then back in to get it. So, I, I don't know. I, I think I'm going to be fair with it and say that's not a fail. It, it's a funky little pinch point there, but I, ergonomically, it's so weird how to get there. I, I'm going to say I'm going to say it's good to go. Um, now, if you cut yourself on it, 
okay, man, I was wrong. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, cause I guess you could get it, but it, it'd be awful weird dynamics to get in there to get that. Um, yeah. All right. Can it cut? Um, sure enough, I don't have a piece of paper ready. Um, sitting in the wings waiting to go, but that's okay. Let's get a piece of paper and see what's up. Man, is this thing a beast? Bu -bu -bu beast. Yeah, it's not sharp at all. Um, I mean, it's sharp, but I mean, it's, it's nowhere near where it should be. Um, and this video is at 30 minutes. So I'm going to, I'm going to not sharpen this now. I'll put it in the comments and, uh, let you know what I had to do to get it sharp. I'll strop it first and see if that's what's up. And, uh, if that doesn't get it, then I'll sharpen it and I'll, I'll, uh, I'll report in the comments before I post the video. Anyway, super long video. I appreciate you watching. I, it's a pretty cool knife. I mean, as it sits, I'd say, uh, what did I pay for it? I paid $80, uh, ordered it yesterday. It's at my house here today. So it's a one day Amazon purchase. I mean, what a beast. Um, Check the comments for sharpness because, of course, who wants a knife that can't get sharp? Um, I don't have any fear. I think I'm going to get it there. And Ethan grow has been doing a pretty good job with their steel. I'm watching uh, some other reviewers that do steel reviews, love them knives. Uh, I think he's he's found them to be pretty consistent. So um, there it is. Uh, would I recommend it? Yeah, I like the knife. For 80 bucks, 14 c 28 n you want a, a monster of a knife? There it is.